I've got an issue, let's say, with trusting God with my life. Okay. Do you think that's going to show up in my marriage? No question. I think it's going to show up in my finances. Absolutely. My job. Yep. My relationships. 100%. Right? They do. They leak. They bleed, whatever you want to call it. Whether we intend for them to or not, by default, they do. Right? <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with John Sabor. It's good to be with you again. You did a great job, man. The, the interview with Jimmy Graham. If you guys missed that interview, please go back and watch that one. It's a great one. Incredible Thank story you. about a, a hero, a modern-day hero. Man, is he a hero. And you were able to pull out some really good things from him, things that we can all learn from. And uh, he we was were, on fire. He was all over the place, he? was he? on fire. <laughs> and you and I both did push-ups after he left. Yeah, he was, no doubt. kind of felt like we needed to man up. A I appreciate bit, you but. protecting me from Jimmy Graham. I, you're yeah. right. I'm a little weak. And I don't think I could have I don't think I could have managed that resist. interview the same way. He I did couldn't it. resist. It just proves I, I listened to your interviews. See? I, I do listen to your interviews. And it doesn't do. go both ways. I just know that I to do. be true. But I, we're not going to air our dirty laundry in front of <laughs> Pursuit Nation. In front of the millions that are watching today? Yes, as we just already did. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about our presenting sponsor. We want to give them the uh, the credit that they are due because if yes, it wasn't for these guys, we wouldn't be doing this and we wouldn't have the opportunity to come to you on a regular basis. Realty One Group Premier, uh, Gary Carlson and his crew, they do an incredible job. Listen, if you are wanting to make the, one of the biggest choices you will ever make in your life, and that's a real estate-driven choice, to buy, sell, rent, man, they do it all. This is a group you want to definitely check in on. And you can check them out. They're a family-owned business, first of all. Mm -hmm. They are faith-based. And so they, their foundation and their moral is found in Scripture, and they're just mm -hmm. incredible people. They do the right thing for the right reasons for, the, for you, for the you, their customer. And speaking of the you, they like you. They like them. That's right. He, Gary's come to us and says, yeah, we really like the people that are coming in and, and showing up at the, at the doorstep and asking for, the, for us to help them. And, and when they come from this group of people out here, they really That's like right. that. They're, so thank they're you. They're good people, and you're good people. For so those of you, you that are listening to The Pursuit, thank you for uh, – Coming alongside and, and, and giving back to our sponsors yeah. that make it possible for this, this show to be, be coming to you today. So check them out at RealtyOneGroupPremier.com, RealtyOneGroupPremier.com. Thanks to the group there uh, at Realty One. All right, let's, let's get into our topic today. And this, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to use some graphical representation. We're going to use some imagery. And what we're going to talk about today, John, is this is a culinary lesson. Is it really? You didn't realize no, I that did I not, had some cooking skills, did you? I didn't know you? we were going to start cooking. I got the skill. Well, I don't have the skills yet. Let me just say this. This is a shout out to Chef Brian. We had him out to the house the other day. We did a little Christmas gift for the kids where we said, listen, we're going to bring in a chef and we're going to do four lessons and he's going to teach us different ways to cook. And, yep. and he would be offended, I think, by the message I'm going to share today. But it, nonetheless, it is a culinary um, example of life okay where are the ingredients i'm looking around for some well i'm going to show you some ingredients sugar. here in just a minute in, okay. in pictures okay and for those of you that are joining us via youtube and watching us on video you're going to get to see some of these graphics represented on screen i'm going to try to do my best to describe for our audio listeners there are some what they're going to be looking at or what they're listening to i should say yeah but i want to talk about three different types of food three different types of culinary experiences did I get on the wrong podcast here? Some three different types of food. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Three different right? types of, I should say, culinary experiences. Oh, okay. So this is, a, this is the Martha Stewart podcast. That's true because, you know what? Food by itself, there's a presentation with the food. There's that a is presentation the, to the that food. That is the culinary experience. No the, question. All, the, all five senses around the experience of food, and that's the culinary experience. Okay. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So we're going to talk about, first of all, the fantasy. What does the fantasy life look like, and how is it best rent represented in our culinary world? And it's, it's, I think just about everybody that's out there listening has experienced this right here. That's right. They are not sponsoring today's episode, so they're getting free pub. Wow. But the Red Baron frozen pizza. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you and I have talked about this before. This, this is a classic example of of the lie that the world tries to sell you. That's right. Right? It really is a classic example because if you've ever cooked a Red Baron pizza, nothing against Red Baron, but if you've ever cooked a Red Baron pizza, let me just tell you something. It doesn't look like this mm -hmm. 
when it comes Correct. out of the oven. Man, when I see that in the store, just looking at it right now, yeah. it makes my mouth water. I can see your mouth is watering right now. Right. Yeah. That, this is an example of like the, the best pizza place that you've ever been to, that, right. that corner store pizza place that you go to, that's your favorite go-to. And that looks like their pizza. Yeah, it? where they all speak Italian. Uh, yeah. Every every one of them, even the hostess. Right? Yeah, amore. Welcome, John, to the to the Red Baron. Yeah, to the Red Baron. Yeah, but this isn't this is not this is what not we're that. getting here, right? Okay, yeah. You know, this yeah. looks awesome. It looks delicious. Yeah. And then we look on the back of the box, which is just a piece of paper. But if we were to look on the back of the box, what does it say? Simple three steps uh-huh. to get this preheat oven, four hundred right? degrees. Preheat it to four hundred degrees. Take the pizza out of the wrapper, and by the way, off of the cardboard. That, that's another you don't, key. I don't think you have to. I think there's a you make the crust soggy or soft or something by. No, no, no. You you got to. No, it you off either the go on the rack. You go straight yeah, on the rack. That's, that's what makes it crispy. See, the cardboard thing you'll create a fire, John. Not a good <laughs> thing. Okay. <laughs> I don't make these, but yes, I understand. Yes. So, but the point is, three easy steps. Three easy steps. A quick shortcut. Sure. To this, right? That's yeah. all you got to do. It's a shortcut, and it's going to look like this. And this represents the fantasy. This is the fantasy that we all buy into. Say it. And we believe. Yeah. And then we get to a point where what happens? The pizza is ready. The bell goes off. We pull it out of the oven, and first you're like, wait a minute. I was sold a bill of goods. It doesn't look like anything that's on the box. Well, okay, so when you're saying fantasy— this is even how we think our Christian life should go, right? We put this, Hutch, this is our expectation of God right here. Yeah. yeah. I'm following you. Where's my pizza like this? And it's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look like That's this. That's right. And and all of a sudden I end up with a, you know, cardboard tasting pizza and in the first place that I'm I'm projecting that disappointment is heavenly. Yeah. I didn't sign up for this. I wanted this. Yeah. We, we, we take a bite of it, and we realize, wow, this this really isn't what I thought it was going to be. Right. Right? And we begin to search. And we might even go back to the store and buy a couple more frozen pizzas. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just the brand. Oh, right. Maybe it's not sure. Red Bear. Maybe it's Totino's that I need to buy next time. Right? And we try different brands. And what do we realize? They all basically taste the same. They do. But this is, represents the fantasy. Yeah. This is what we think we should get. This is what the world tries to sell us. These are the things we buy. We think these three easy steps, mm. a quick, easy shortcut, and I'm going to have the best pizza straight out of uh, Italy. Well, right? it, and I'd even say, uh, again, the world, that's, that is true. But how often when I talk to somebody about their walk with the Lord, when I'm coaching somebody, when I'm discipling someone, when somebody, you know, I'm evangelizing, somebody that has never walked with God before, how often do I try to portray this this walk with the Lord as looking like this? Yeah. And then when they get into it, it's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie, John. You bet. Because that's not reality, right? And, and you know the thing about the frozen pizza uh-huh. is it's a shortcut. And, and here's another thing. There's no sacrifice. There's no sacrifice with this. The, you know, you're, you're getting a shortcut on time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really simple and easy. Mm-hmm. You just go buy it. You just place it in. Fifteen minutes later, you're going to get a perfect pizza out of the oven. There's no sacrifice. It's a shortcut. And that's what we think is the way. Everybody's looking for the shortcut. How right. can we cut the corner to get the best pizza, if I could use that? As a, for my best life, how, how can I cut the corner to get there? Mm. And, and if we're honest with ourselves, that's not the way it works, is it? So true. So then there's the perceived way. Now, the guys that are listening to this podcast today, you guys will be able to really relate to this much more than, than our lady listeners because the ladies are much better at this than, than what us men are. But here's the, here's the perceived way that life happens. Mm-hmm. And it's best represented through another culinary experience from the freezer section. And it's represented oh, here Lord. with the Swanson's uh, TV, TV dinner. dinner, right? Have you ever had this one? Do they still sell those? Oh, yeah. I remember that when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. No offense, Friday Mom. nights, Mom and Dad would go out and they'd pop That's the TV what it dinner was. in. Yeah, yeah. Mom, Mom was a great cook. Let me just be be straight up here, okay? She's listening. Yeah. She was a great cook. Still is. Mom, we love you. Every once in a while, we we do this, though. You, you and it kind of felt out. like a treat, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it's a big deal. You get to sit in front of the TV. Yeah. And I know in your childhood, you didn't get much TV. That's but correct. Not, that's another episode for that's another That's a whole day. other issue. But... Uh, 
So, so what does this represent? When you see this Swanson dinner, right, the Salisbury steak, that's like the classic. Oh, yeah. That's, that's like high-end. Yeah. That's high-end TV dinner. Yes. Yeah, right? It. You're getting steak. Yes. This isn't a cheap, you know, like cheese sandwich with <laughs> applesauce and do stuff. They, wait a minute. Do they sell TV oh. dinners that are not Salisbury steaks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't know that. No doubt about it. Is I thought every, you got? Well, you were, you I were thought like a, every TV dinner had Salisbury steaks. You were steak. a rich family, I guess. But he, here's the point. Here's the point of the TV dinner. And this is when I say this is the perception. Okay. This is the way we think life works, especially us men. And it's this, that we compartmentalize our life. No doubt. Doubt, preach. Right? We're Say really it. good at that. Yeah. We think we think we're really good at keeping everything separate. Right. So let's say the Salisbury steak. Let's say you're in the prime of life and your prime of your working hours. Yeah. The Salisbury steak represents your job. Okay. Okay. The mashed potatoes. Maybe that's your family. Marriage. Right. Your okay. marriage. All right. Then over here in the green beans, maybe that's your finances. See what you did there with the green. Uh huh. See yeah. connection. Yeah. And then in the middle. The smallest compartment, if you're lucky, is your faith journey, Mm. right? This is where we go to church once a week, and I go listen to a sermon. It Mm -hmm. better not be longer than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. They better not sing more than two worship songs, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I'm going to get frustrated because, after all, we got to beat everyone else to lubies, right? You got to beat the Baptist to lubies. You got to beat the Methodist to lubies. So we got to get out of here as quick so we can get the real deal. But but here's the deal. We, We think... This is the way life should be. And we're actually, in a lot of ways, taught that this is the way that life's supposed to be. Keep everything in its proper compartment. For whatever you do, don't bring your issues to work. Don't let the don't let the chocolate cake or the brownie or whatever this is mix in with the meatloaf. Yeah, the keep, salad, we, we got to keep gravy, these things separate, gravy, right? Right. And, and there's laws that are established right. that keep that from happening. There's right. all kinds of things, and there's expectations that we place on one another. That says, hey, whatever you do, keep this. Keep this out of here. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, what do we do? We even keep this out of our finances. Yeah, no doubt. We keep this out of our marriage. No doubt. And out of our relationships that we have. And, and I'm wondering if that was if this was really to scale. Maybe there's like two green beans there, a little crumb of chocolate cake, you know, maybe a little a tater tot, not some mashed potatoes. Yeah. Maybe a tater tot in the marriage spot. And then, you know, then this is where we're spending all our time. Yeah, this absolutely. Is, this is where the gravy is, right? This is the full enchilada, so to speak, right? But, but what's the truth? Yeah. Really, what's the truth? And, and let's not even go there from a faith standpoint. Okay. Let, let's not even talk about yet our faith beginning to move into these different areas. But, but if, if we're, let me ask you this question, John. If you got problems with Tara, mm. let's say you guys had a little squabble, sure, which I know never happens. Never. But let's say you and Tara have a squabble yeah. on Wednesday night, okay, and you're going into work Thursday morning. Nope. Is there a chance that this affects this? No doubt about it, especially with what we do. Well, this is only one of my jobs, right? But especially with what we do. But in practicality and reality, if I was a mechanic— it should, and if it doesn't affect my ability to do an oil change the next day, there's something wrong with me. But but what's the lie that we've, what's the perception? The perception is that they're all separate. That they don't. Yeah, yeah, you, is, right? you're good there. This isn't going to impact That's right. this. That's right. Right, I'm going to keep these things separate. Man. But man, they bleed. Whether you realize it or not, and whether you're willing to accept it or not, they yes. bleed. So if that's true, which it is, why not embrace it? Mm. Why not embrace it? So what does that look like? Well, obviously, this is a faith-based prod- podcast. Yes, it is. So we need to talk about what does this look like? What does the brownie look like when it begins to drip into your Salisbury steak? Yeah. What's the brownie look like when it begins to, to dip into your green beans over here? That's right. Right, your finances and your marriage. What does that look like, and how do we do that? Before we get that, I want to talk about the reality. This next culinary frozen experience will show us what life is really like, whether you realize it or not. Okay. And so since it is that way, like I said just a moment ago, we need to embrace it. It's best represented by, you know it, the chicken chicken pot pot pie. pie. Marie Callender's chicken pot pie. Let me just stop. This makes me want to gag. Does it really? It does, because when I was a kid... Okay. I ate a chicken pot pie and I got sick. Like I got the flu that night. Yeah. Oh. And so I don't need to explain. It ruined it. Right. For you. Yeah. So I cannot eat a chicken pot pie again. Right. I don't care how homemade it is. Right. It ain't happening. Okay. That's fair. So this makes me like gag a little bit. 
but I can I can carry through the rest of the see, episode. <laughs> see, for the rest, probably for many of the rest of us, right? This one doesn't have a lot of appeal. The frozen pizza, we know what that's all about. That right there it makes gets you me, going. oh, man, there's nothing like a chicken pot pie. So Why? This, because it's kind of dessert. Okay. It's kind of meat and potatoes. It's kind of some gravy in there. There's kind of some vegetables, and it's all in one deal. Now, I do have to admit this, though, and it kind of illustrates. Otherwise, I wouldn't go on this tangent. It kind of illustrates, I think, where you're going. Tara gets on me. Many people do. When you know we're having you know a nice southern meal, okay, and especially if she's made sweet potato pie, okay, is is when this applies. There's nothing I like better, you know, when you you like, we're gonna have dessert tonight. You get up, you put your plate away, and then you get your dessert plate. Mm-hmm. That is what I do not do. You mix it all in. I want to put my dessert, especially if it's sweet potato pie, right on the gravy. You just, <laughs> I don't, I can't imagine how many people you just offended. It's okay. I don't care. That may be the most offensive thing you've said so I've far. I've said a lot of offensive things. No, you do. But that was a pretty offensive one when it comes to the culinary experience. Okay. People are very particular. Well, but what is this, though? Let's well, talk about so it. So let's talk about okay. that. Okay. Here's the one thing about the chicken pot pie. is is the, the one truth about the chicken pot pie is it's hard to identify the individual flavors within a chicken pot pie. It's mixed together. Why? Because yeah. they're mixed together. They're cooked together. The flavors begin to pour one into the other, and it makes it more difficult to separate the pea the peas from, from the, the carrot yep. from the whatever nasty ingredients are in this thing, <laughs> okay? But here's the point. This is really how life is. It is, no doubt. Everything kind of touches each other, doesn't it? And the flavors of one begin to seep into the other. So if that is true, what then can we do about it? Do we go back and try to create a compartmentalized frozen mm. dinner? Or do we embrace the fact that these things are designed mm-hmm. to flow into one another? Man, let me let me throw an example out okay. there. I've got an issue, let's say, with trusting God with my life. Okay. You think that's going to show up in my marriage? No question. You think it's going to show up in my finances? Absolutely. My job? Yep. My relationships? 100%. Right? They do. They leak. They bleed, whatever you want to call it. Whether we intend for them to or not, by default, they do. Right? Yeah. They do. So that, that, that sweet pie that you were talking about, that you like to slop right in the yes, middle of sir. all that, it was designed to be there. If our faith is our dessert, and that's oftentimes how we treat our faith, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If we're really honest with ourselves, mm-hmm. we kind of set it's, it off to the end. It's last. Right? It's the a last priority. thing we consider. Yeah. If I have enough energy on Sunday, I'll go to church. Yeah. If I have enough time, I might pray. Mm-hmm. At home, mm-hmm. I might do a quiet time, maybe. Right, that's we're starting to get aggressive now. Mm-hmm. But the, it's kind of the dessert; it's left at the end, right? It's kind of a, an afterthought, if I could use it that way. But here's where faith and life collide, and this is where the things of the world and the things of truth of the Bible begin to flip everything on its head, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what Jesus was so amazing at. He would take the things of this world and he'd flip them on their head. Yes. And this is another example. He's saying, listen, the dessert, the brownie is made to be in the Salisbury steak. The brownie was designed yeah. to be in your green beans. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute, they don't go together. No, they absolutely do. So let me ask you a question. As, as we as we kind of begin to shift and and, and move our discussion now into what is the practical truth and application okay. of this culinary experience? What does it look like in your mind, John, to practically begin to, because this is what it requires, inviting God into these other areas? Mm-hmm. What does that look like in your life? Yeah. And what, what was that process like for you? Was it easy? Was it difficult yeah, when I you think, became a Christian? Oh, gosh. I mean... You know, let, let's not give me that much credit to say when I became a Christian. I've been a Christian for, you know, 20, 30 years now. 30 years. 30 years wow. old today, or this this spring. And uh, But let's not give me that much credit to say I figured it out then. Sure. When, okay, because there was Fair a enough. lot that was Saul to Paul and change. But this is a process. This is a process. Because you're right, we naturally think about our lives in the world and in, in, in Christ. We naturally will begin to think of our lives like that, the compartmentalized kind of paradigm. And what you start to realize is that 
when you separate these things, you become inauthentic pretty quickly, mm-hmm. and you get exposed mm. pretty quickly, right? And in, in and that's why you know Romans eight twenty eight, God does work all things together for good. This is we should just put Romans eight twenty eight on this instead of Marie calendars, right? That when um, when you realize that God does that, that that failures and and places where you've been exposed in your life that this this compartmentalized paradigm is exposed in your life is actually an opportunity to invite Jesus into the middle of that thing mm. is that too religious to kind of say to invite him in do you know what I'm you know what I mean but you want to yeah no expound I think, we, I think little we, bit? we need to unpack that let's, yeah. let's let's just use this analogy let's go back to our uh, frozen dinner okay. experience the the separated compartmentalized yeah. frozen dinner if green beans are our finances yes. okay I don't know about you but when I eat food, I have a very weird twist about me. Whereas you like to take your sweet pie and put it right in the middle of your gravy. My deal is that every bite in every area on my plate has to be rationed. And what I mean by that is I don't want to end up my meal with a bunch of green beans left mm-hmm. or a mm-hmm. bunch of mashed potatoes left or a Got bunch it. of Salisbury steak left. I want to ration it so my last bite is comprised of a Salisbury steak a little bit of a potato and a little bit of green bean, bam, done, meals over, nothing left on the plate, right? That's a big deal to me. I I ration my food. There's some people out there that that share that same experience. I know my sister does that. It's probably where I got it from. But what happens at the end of the month, at the end of the meal, when you're a little short on green beans, Mm. okay? These are our finances. Yes. What do we do about that? Mm Mm-hmm. How do we invite the brownie into our green beans, right? What does that look like on a practical experience? So let's yeah. literally take that example. You, you may be out there. You may be a person that says, listen, I love the Lord. I love God. I trust God. And I just I don't know. I don't know how to invite God into my finances. That may be you out there today because, man, there's a lot of people like this, John. What does that look like? How do we do that? What does it require of us? Mm. How do we invite God into our finances? What's that look like? You know, I'm trying to stick within the metaphor and within the analogy. And, and to me, it really is what you just said. It's it's rationing your food. It is it is including a bite of brownie with your little bit of green so beans. So how do you do right? it? How do you and so, do it? so that means allowing that aspect of your life that should be the most important to dictate decisions that you make regarding each one of those, quote, compartments okay. of our life, okay. right? It's to acknowledge that within each bite, there's a little piece of brownie, right? And if you if we're honest with ourselves, I'm, I, I know I'm taking this metaphor a little bit fur, further than maybe you intended, but if we're honest with ourselves, within a bite of green beans, if you had some brownie in the bite of green beans, would you even taste the green beans? Probably mm. not. The mm. overwhelming strength of that bite and the flavor of that bite is the brownie itself, mm. right? And so it's the seasoning, if you will, that needs to be a part of every part of that, of, of, of the, the dinner of our life. You know, right? what, what, what a lot of people I don't think realize is the one topic that maybe is discu- that Jesus talks about more than any other yeah. in the New Testament, money. it's about money. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, it probably means it's pretty important. Yeah. And he knows the the stumbling block that this thing called money can become. Mm. And then he also turns it on his head and says, but yet this can also be an incredible blessing because mm-hmm. this is an opportunity, right, money. Yeah. This is an opportunity for us to, to learn trust. Yes. God says, do you trust me? It's the only place in the Bible where God says, test me mm-hmm. is when it comes to our money. Mm-hmm. Test me, mm-hmm. tithe, give to the kingdom, even when your finances don't suggest it. In other words, don't wait till you have enough brownie at the end of the meal, or excuse me, green beans at the end of the meal to share them with your friend. Understood. Yeah. Share them at the beginning of the meal. Yeah. If I could, if I could use the analogy. Yeah. He's saying, do you, are you willing, regardless of what your, what your spreadsheet says, what your balance sheet says, or what your budget says at home, there may be more month than money. Uh-huh. Do you trust me uh-huh. to give? Because he says, test me and see if I don't open the floodgates. Only place he says that, I believe, is, is the word test me in this, Malachi 3. Here's, here's something else I just realized. I don't know if you did this on purpose or not. But as you look at these compartments, each one of these is really, if we're honest with ourselves, filled with things with no nutritional value. Mm. 
But if you want to look at the health of someone, there's one place to look on this picture, how they handle their beans. Mm. And, and you know what? I think that's why Jesus put so much importance on it. Because, you know, I heard somebody say one time, you want to, if you want to assess the, the health of somebody spiritually, let them show you your, your, their checkbook. Mm. So true. Yeah. I want to look at the scripture. Okay. I've asked you to pull up you Psalm did. 96, and I'm going to ask you to read the chapter. It's a short chapter, 13, 14 verses, I think I it is. I can handle that. If you would read this for me, and, and, and what we're going to look at is the psalmist's perspective on what aspects of our life are we to worship him with. Mm. Okay? okay? So from that perspective, from that backdrop, let's read Psalm 96. Okay, here it goes. It's a New King James Version. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the, of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The, lo the world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, for he, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. So you think about the theme of that chapter. And what is it summarizing? It's summarizing that all is his. Mm hmm and all things will worship him. And so what the encouragement here from the psalmist is, is if that is true, then we are to take all aspects of our life and trust him with it. All those aspects he cares about. He cares about your business. Mm -hmm. He cares about whether, you're, whether you get the promotion or not. He cares about your next raise. He cares about the struggles you're having with a coworker right? Maybe your boss is, is, is frustrating to you and you're struggling in that relationship. The father cares about those things. So why not invite him into those places? No when doubt. we do that, here's the cool thing. And it just said it. It's a form of worship. When we invite him into our finances and we trust him, and as, as Malachi said, as we test him mm -hmm. to say, are you really going to be a God of your promise? That if I'm going to give, even when it doesn't feel like I should give, that your promises that you'll open the floodgates. I can share so many stories about times where God has done that for us. I know you can do the same yeah, thing. Amen. And in your marriage, gosh, marriage is hard. I have the most incredible wife on the planet, and it's so hard because I, I'm a punk, right? I'm a selfish guy. And, and what happens is we find that, that this struggle happens when, when our wills begin to clash. And man, the one thing that we have to learn to do is how do I submit this to God? How, how do I invite him in the process to help me see my wife as God sees her, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there, there's just an opportunity here to embrace the Marie Callender pot pie approach to life. Listen, our life bleeds into each other. So why yes. not invite the creator of the universe, the one that loves you more than anything on this planet, into those things to experience healing and freedom. And honestly, it removes anxiety. Yeah, it does. His word says, do not be anxious about anything, anything, your marriage, your finances, your work. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, through our prayers, through our petitions, he says, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. meaning yeah. you're trusting that God is going to take care of this situation before the answer comes. Mm -hmm. He says, with thanksgiving, he says, present those things to me. Bring me into the pot pie. Yeah. I want to be a part of this <laughs> recipe. If, if I'm honest with you, Hutch, this kind of looks like thanksgiving, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> That's, 
that's the that's the ingredients for what we typically have at Thanksgiving. And, and There's he says, no doubt. He says, "Invite me into this." And here's here's the here's the kicker. I want to make sure we hit this at the yeah. end of the scripture, Philippians four three four and five. He says, um, "Do not be be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving." He says, "Present your requests to me." Mm-hmm. And here's the promise: a peace that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. No so one of the greatest benefits, one of the greatest blessings we receive when we invite him into these areas that can be so stressful yeah. is peace. I, when I read that, you know what I always think about? And it's kind of cheesy. I think about my, um, my heart and my mind as being inside a fortress, like an old, like a castle. Yeah. Okay? And literally peace is a soldier standing at the gate, guarding it. Say, no, 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 We're, you're not coming in here, yeah. right? Peace is an active force. We think of peace as passive. Yep. It's an active force that protects our heart and our mind from uh, being led astray, quite frankly. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I hope this culinary experience was helpful <laughs> to you. Um, I'm hungry the next, now. Here's, here's my hope. Here's my hope <laughs> is the next time, John, yeah. you go up to the freezer and you're beginning to pull out one of these meals, You'll remember this lesson. I, I will. I will. I do have this request, though. Anytime we're going to do a, a, a show about food, let's not do it right before lunch. <laughs> well, I can you tell you one thing. Stomach growling? I can tell you one thing I won't be eating, and it's a Marie <laughs> Calendar chicken pot pie. Sorry, Marie. Nothing personal. But I ain't doing it. All right? Hey, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us on The Pursuit, and we'll see you next time. See you later. <laughs>